Hello to all you Aries people out there. This is your monthly horoscope for July 2019. Let's break this down. Let's start straight away. These are general horoscopes. So if you are saying like true Aries, Vita, what the hell are you saying? This is rubbish. Just do this and stop the video. If you're saying, yeah, that resonates, work with it, work with it. But what I'm trying to say is you're the captain of your ship. You have the free will to stop this video or not, <laughs> or to, to decide what you're going to do with this information, right? Now, this is eclipse time. And on July of the 2nd, there's going to be the moon and the sun together, a new moon opposing Saturn Pluto. On the 16th of July, you're going to have the sun, the Venus and the North Node, all opposing Pluto, Saturn, South Node and the moon. Huge, huge, intense times. That has to do with one thing. It has to do with desire. It has to do with strong desires. You know, the team of the month is, is absolutely strong desires. Even a bit, a, maybe compulsive uh, behavior. Um, you know, that feeling that you say, I have no choice. I have to do it. Or I long for this and, and this is stronger than myself. Of course, when that happens, it's not fun, is it? Because it takes over. Yeah, there, there could be consequences of those actions or um, because you feel that way uh, you feel frustrated and um, you cannot reason with it because that's what Pluto is all about here you cannot reason with Pluto you cannot say let go of it and it's gonna happen no let go is not an action it's a, it's a feeling and it has to happen to you now for those of you who want to know a bit more about um, astrology and eclipses, I'll give you a, a recommendation here. Someone who knows a lot about eclipses is here, Bernadette Brady. And she talks about eclipse families, the Saros family it is called. And these, this eclipse is an element or a member, so to speak, of the eclipse, the third no, uh, north. And that has to do with the Saros family. And the flavor of that eclipse is, again, compulsive behavior, compulsive, obsessive thinking. So it's, it's a very strong energy. Now, what to do with this? What do, what do we do when we have energy like that? And for you, this is happening because of Venus and the North Node in itself together is already strong desires. It's uh, like on the one hand, you have a very strong desire, which is Venus and the North Node. But on the other hand, you have a very strong fear, which is Saturn and Pluto blocking that longing. So what do you do? Um, and for you, that is happening on the area of a life that has to do with work life, work life balance, uh, basically, for a lot of you. Um, Venus in the North Node is striving towards having a home, having, uh, coming home, or having a home, fa having, having a family, having uh, a good place to live, having a nice environment. Uh, to be nurtured on an emotional level. If you're saying I have no family or I have no, well, to, to feel that parent, parenting yourself, basically. There is a need for that. There's a longing for that. And that is a good thing. I mean, desires are in nature, not bad. Um, of course, you could say, yeah, the Buddha is saying uh, desire is wrong, but I don't see it that way because it it's, it's, gives us life and our desires. It gives us direction as well um, and we grow so fast whilst we're having those desires so i would not recommend to suppress this certainly not with this energy with pluto uh, and saturn because if we are going to suppress it we could say yeah 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 but i keep on working you know saturn pluto responsibility in the tent i'll keep on working keep on working i know my family is falling apart and actually i also want to be with the family i mean it's a very common uh, feeling of course of contradiction we have it all of the time and lives are so complex um, that we have desires in one place and we have fears in the other place so you could say but no 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 no. I'm gonna suppress suppress my my need for my family my need I know it but I'm gonna suppress it then of course it's gonna explode the situation is going to become more crisis prone and the you know what you suppress comes out in another form maybe even worse than you wanted it to be so that's not my recommendation to express those feelings 
But of course you can say, yeah, Verle, easier said than done. I have to earn my, my money to, to have a more because I have a mortgage. And, uh, but I want to be at home as, as well. Yes, those two uh, different parts of your life accepted that you are in the state where you are. That's the first thing, to accept where you are and to see where you are, that, to see that this is a paradox. And paradoxes are not there to be solved. They, they are there to be sitting with, first of all, to see them and then to transform them. That's the only way. And we have the luck now that this strong opposition has a trine with Neptune. And that's the way out. So for you, Neptune is in the 12th house. Um, and, and the way out for you, although it, so if you feel that stress of what do I need to do? Do I need to let go of my work completely or do I need to, to suppress my desire? What do I need to do? Um, go towards the 12th house, which is try to, to do something on your own. In, in, in solitude almost. The 12th house is being alone and enjoying yourself. So that could be a walk in the park or a walk at the seaside or watching a nice movie. Be gentle with yourself and try to relax in something that has nothing to do with those two items. And if you do that, if you focus there, you can at least try and put your focus there, things will sort itself out and things will become clearer and things won't get solved in, a, in, a, in, a, in an overnight, no, because eclipses tend to work for a couple of months later, but then you don't have that, um, um, how would I say, that stressful feeling anymore. So it's like, try to find some ways to relax yourself. Try to find some ways to calm your mind by doing yoga, by doing meditation, whatever you feel good about and it's going to help you in seeing that opposition in a better perspective because you're going to find a solution ultimately for sure or you're going to work less for instance and and um, or a different work and it will show itself i mean you don't have to do all the work which is different uh, difficult for aries people because aries people they are driven by mars so if there's a problem, I want to fix it. But I'm saying here, don't try to fix too quickly. Life will show some solutions there and it will come maybe in a dream. I know it sounds cheesy here, but it's true. You know, with these constellations, um, Neptune in your 12th house, house, a dream can, or, or prayer, say a prayer. So if, if you believe in that, of course, uh, I mean, um, you could say a prayer to the universe or to nature um, and, um, and that can release already a big part of the tension. So Neptune is really helping here. Now, if this is not enough that is going on, we also have a Mercury retrograde at Mars in Leo, both in Leo. Mercury and Mars are both in Leo, but on the 8th of the month, Mercury goes backwards, retrograde in Leo. And for you, Leo is the fifth house of your self-expression. And it goes backwards then, Mercury also in Cancer, again in that fourth house of you wanting to have emotional stability and so on. What could this be? It could be that the Mercury retrograde has to do with going back to your roots, going literally, maybe you live in a foreign country and you're going back to visit uh, your home country, for instance, where you're coming from originally. It could be that. Um, or it could be you thinking about your past, watching old pictures and, and, and um, yeah, you're feeling good about that because it gives you some nurturing and some uh, emotional stability energy there. So that could be that. And on another level, Mars in the fifth house is very beautiful for you. For, for those of you who have said, yes, I've spent not time enough on my hobbies or I, I truly need to pick that up again. Now is the time with Mars in your fifth house there. Um, it, it's being active with, uh, it could be if you have children, be very active with your children. Could be that as well. Or they are very, very active and they're walking around all of the time. Um, and uh, are you being active with them? It could also be a bit more argumentative so that, that they have a, a tongue that is quite, you know, with Mercury there as well, that is quite uh, fiery, so to speak. 
Um, but whatever it is, you, this is not really a negative energy for you because Leo is trining your Aries energy. So normally, uh, in general, this is good energy for you to be active in hobbies, in creative self-expression, in being on the stage maybe, you know, Leo, the fifth house, being on the stage there. And you're going to enjoy it for sure. Having said that, having said that, I wish you a very, very interesting month. Uh, enjoy that. Thank you so much for listening and see you next month. Bye-bye.